Welcome to The Real Estate Show. From buying to selling and everything in between. Rochester's home for everything real estate. And now, your hosts from the Anthony Butera team of Keller Williams Realty, Greater Rochester. It's Anthony Butera and Jason Mancuso. Hey everybody, Jason and Anthony here. Welcome to The Real Estate Podcast. Uh, we are on episode... Well, I think episode 109. Ooh. Episode 109 of the podcast. I don't think Stop we, counting after like six. I don't think we talked after the Super Bowl. No, we haven't. It's our first time talking this after the it. Super Bowl. Yep. Yeah. Did you see Tom Brady wasted after the parade? Uh, <laughs> he was drunk. Oh, Brady you didn't drunk. see it? Dude, no. you got to look it up. He was sh- shmammered. He needed a baby they, sitter. They wouldn't let him. They wouldn't let him talk to the media, and he was like basically getting you know carried around. It was awesome. He like, um he threw the trophy. He I threw didn't the see trophy. that. That's right, awesome. He, he was on a boat, and there was like a boat maybe I'm not even kidding, like 15 yards behind him, and he threw the trophy <laughs> off to from one boat to another boat to other teammates. That trophy looks heavy. Yeah, <laughs> oh my I'm sure it is. God. No, I heard somebody on the radio talking about it. I mean, everybody's aware of, like, his diet and, you know, how crazy he is with it. I'm sure he hasn't had a drink of alcohol in, you know, six months or whatever, and he wins the Super Bowl. He probably had, like, three drinks in the Florida sun and just, you know. Yeah, what does he have? His TB12 diet? Yeah, it's like a whole thing. I think he he sells it, right? Yeah, that's he eats nothing. (laughs) Yeah, vegetables. You and Tom Brady are like twins. I know. I know. Awesome. He made me proud, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, freaking Tom Brady, right? Go figure. Yes. I don't know why I don't know why I bet against him, but it's entertaining. He's to lose money. <laughs> and, and and where and where's he going? I mean, he'll get three more years. Yeah, no, I think so. I think so. Insanity. Uh, whatever. He's out of our uh, out of our division. He's out of our division. Yeah. yeah. So now, if things really work out for the Bills next year, we'll be able to lose to him in the Super Bowl. Yep. Yeah. It's just crazy. But I want to. Uh, been seeing some some rhetoric. Been seeing some articles about a housing bubble, similar to uh, yeah, well, we were 12, 13 years ago at this point, two thousand eight, right? Yeah. So to like recap what happened over a decade ago was you could literally walk into a bank, not have a pulse and get a mortgage to buy a home. Like literally didn't have to have any documentation in a a lot of cases. And you could get multiple homes too. That was me. My first house. I wasn't in the business. Made, I think at that time I was making like 30 grand a year and they pre-qualified me for three hundred something thousand dollars, right? Really, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, and this is reckless, Anthony. Who was like, I'll figure it, <laughs> so, I'll figure it so out. perfect example. Reckless Anthony matched with reckless banking system. Yep. At a mass level, and then you know, people continue to be reckless and can't pay their bills and what you know not to get too deep but like these mortgages were structured to where like you would get an introductory rate and then it would bounce up from there you know whatever it was six months a year or two years later and now you can't make your payments because it's you know way more than you can afford and you know it wasn't disclosed or you didn't read it whatever the situation is you can't afford it you stop making payments you're going into foreclosure that's how what happened in 2008 you know, took place in, in the Cliff Notes version. And, you know, mass, mass, uh, mass issue in terms of people losing their homes. And, you know, along the way, the home values rose to a point where, you know, they, they, they plummeted because um, there wasn't, there wasn't any demand left to meet, you know, the, the, the pricing that was, that was out there. You know, nobody could afford it type of thing. So, Fast forward to where we're at now and, you know, people starting to throw out either predictions or just talking about a potential housing bubble bursting. I I don't think we're in the same, I mean, it's totally different circumstances, but I don't think we're looking at that. Now we could talk specifically to Rochester and we could, we could talk nationally as well. Um, and, And go from there. I mean, Anthony, what are your, 
What are your thoughts off the cuff? Yeah, so here's my thought. If, if people are, so what are they predicting? And this just shows you guys that, like, we don't come into these podcasts with an agenda. Basically, literally. <laughs> this is, well, how, I this mean, is how it works. I don't so have an example predicting? of a hard, I don't have an example of a hard prediction. I'm just hearing, mm -hmm. like, chatter. Or, yeah. or, you know, more relevant is we'll talk with a lot of people. They're like, hey, I'm going to wait for the market to correct and this pricing to go down before I buy. And we'll try to avoid talking about interest rates as much as possible on this episode because obviously we've beaten the shit out of it in, in you know, not just this year or the year before, but since we've been doing this. Yeah. But, um, you know, people with the logic of like, eh, the, the pricing's too high. I don't want to buy right now. And they're thinking that it's going to come down. That's one aspect. And then there's just like, uh, I, I wanted to bring it up because I feel like there's a lot of chatter out there about like a housing bubble, a housing bubble. The bubble's going to burst. Prices are going to sky or, or plummet. From, Here, I got an article. Right I got an article from the USA Today about it. Do you want me to read a couple yeah. paragraphs? Yeah. That's, All right. And that's one of the articles that I was referring to, too, so far away. It says, talk of a housing bubble is now common among analysts, including those at Swiss bank giant UBS, who back up their claims with charts showing how home prices are outstripping both wages and rents. While home prices have appreciated more than 60% since November 2012, income have only appreciated by 20% and rent by 30%. Um, but it says, but unlike the real estate boom that led to the Great Recession, this nationwide price spike is not being fueled by wholesale collapse in lender ethics. There aren't any low doc or no doc loans to be had, and borrowers are having to do much more than fog a mirror to get funding. Yeah, that first article off, goes. Go ahead. First off, it's a Swiss bank. Like first, you don't even know how to war, <laughs> right? Like if you don't know how to war, then you shouldn't yep, even have war. They, they know how to bank. Yeah, they do know how to bank. <laughs> Banking and chocolate, I think. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. I just I just think that oh, and maybe something happens, right? I just think that, like, if it did, if it happened in a year, it's probably four years before Rochester's affected. Yeah, and by that time, does it, you know, nationally, does the cycle start to turn back around? By that time, Trump will be president again, and we'll be at zero interest. Basically. I mean, it's <laughs> like like we were saying. It seems to say though that it's nothing where like bad loans are being put out. Yeah. No, not yeah. not the, the 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 industry on that end is heavily regulated now, to where that could that could never happen again. I mean, it was yeah. it was like um, I just watched it again recently. But if you watch the the movie The Big Short, the um, yeah, I mean that is like that's you know the the history lesson to to watch for two hours or so to really get a crash course on what happened um you know over a decade ago but you know what that article goes on to say that mark was reading the definition of a bubble and this is quoted but the definition of a bubble is that when it pops there's nothing there that's not this case there's very real demand that exists and that's what's causing prices to increase yep. so we talk about the demand from the interest rate. This article also points out like the millennial or Gen X, whatever, I lose track of what different age groups are called these days, but there's all these people, you know, in their twenties and even early thirties that are still living at home or renting that need to buy a house. And there's a shitload of people that fall in that bracket. They're going to continue to be demand. I mean, what we've been preaching about for so long now is like, you know that the demand is going to be there in terms of like at a personal level, you want to own a home and have equity and be a homeowner, all that conversation, do it now while the rates are low so you can save over the long term. It's, you know, yeah, it's troubling in terms of what the pricing is, but there's still, it's still an advantageous market. Um, demand isn't going to dry up. And that's, you know, I think, what this article is trying to get at in terms of like, this is why there's not going to be a bubble that just pops and causes home prices to sky or you know, fall from the sky because nobody's willing to buy, you know, at, at any given price. That's kind of what happened in 08 in certain markets is that like, you know, whatever, Las Vegas and you got a five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar home, nobody's willing to buy, period. If a seller needed to sell, well, 
the economics of it have to meet to where, you know, a buyer's willing to buy. And that's where it ended up being 300,000, just picking numbers out of thin air. Yeah. And that's that bubble popping type of uh, effect. Uh, so, so here's, here's something that really is happening and, and plays into this. So those grimy loans that were being done before, like Jason said, that will never happen again. How it was, how people were able to oversee that for as many years is just, it's insanity, right? Yeah, that, wasn't that, that wasn't that long ago. Um, but what is really happening and, and like it's bad and yet we're a little more protected is there's, an afford, there's a housing affordability crisis. Like that's a real thing. And yet Rochester is pretty guarded from that. Yeah, like, I think we did, a, we did an episode on this couple times ago right yeah um we still had and don't get me wrong like it's it's becoming more of an issue it, it, it's an issue sure. in Rochester, it's just not that much of an issue like in general people can find something that they can afford it ain't easy right whether they're renting or they're buying it ain't easy but you can still do it it's not like i mean you get certain areas where the the lower income or even med- you know medium income they have to. They have to all of a sudden move uh, an hour an hour further away from a major city, just so they can afford a house. Like that's that's a real issue. They can't be where they want to be because there's no affordability attached to it. Um, so I think we're going to see more of that. But Rochester as a whole, like think about during the good times. Like talk about the '80s, early '90s, where our our, our local economy was thriving, and then Kodak happened. Right. So like, I don't know if there was analysts like saying, woo, here's a city extremely vulnerable. Kodak makes one bad decision and this city is impoverished. Right. And, and, and that's what happens. Now you look at Rochester and you look at the largest employers, um, strong U of R, not going away. Right. Um, and, and, and after that, I mean, you've got Wegmans, but it, we're way more diverse than, than we were. So if one yeah, industry yeah. crashed, which they're going to continue, we're going to have industries that are going to crash just due to uh, becoming obsolete. Um, you know, true tech, right? We're going to see a lot more Amazon and we're going to see a lot less mom and pops. And, yeah, you know, our, uh, our industry our is vulnerable as well. I don't think we're vulnerable to the extent that we're going to be obsolete, but I think we're vulnerable in that a lot more of the real estate transactions can be done virtually and without, you know, face-to-face meetings. Yeah, I mean, there's a new way of the world now that's kind of evolved over the last 12 months, right? But, you know, I think, I think Rochester's safe as well. I mean, we've said it before, like I just, where, you know, our average price point across the board right now is like 175,000, give or take. Where are you going in the country where you can buy a home in the suburbs for under 200000 Yeah. So to me, that's where I, I really do buy into the logic. And I firmly believe, like, we've just been so damn cheap for so long. And I've said this before the same way, but that we had to go up the way that we've gone up. And it's, it's an unsustainable level in terms of continuing to see 10 plus percent gains year over year for the next 10 years to where, like, our average price point gets to 300,000 in the next, you know, short term future. Sure. But I don't think that that 175 is going to turn back down to 130 or whatever no. the example is. You know, if, if if you know market correction just nationally, you know, or when it happens. So I think we're sheltered. I think nationally there could be, you know, more specific cases but not as widespread as there were in 2008. To where like, you know, because there's a lot of markets where like, you know, the average price point's 500,000 and it seems to have risen to six or 650 in like what seems like the last 12, 12 to 24 months. Yeah. That bubble could pop in terms of like it going back down to 500,000 if, if, you know, if there's a economic, you know, cycle in play and a correction. But, you know, we're talking about, and the same thing could happen to us in a degree, but it's just going to be like 10 grand, not a hundred thousand. Right. Yeah. 
here's my fear for here's my fear for Rochester, and it has nothing to do with Rochester outside of Rochester's in New York State, right? Um, as our values go up, which they needed to do, we were we were way overdue for inflation. My fear is now, like Jason, first time home buyers, they're spending 160, 175, 200,000 now. The days of the 125 nice suburban home um, for a first time home buyer, those days are over, right? So you get the $200,000. It's not the mortgage and it's clearly not the interest right now. It's the taxes. That is my fear. That is the gripe with people that are leaving. And let's face it, half of my listing appointments I'm going on, they're leaving New York State. They could buy a $500,000 home in Lauderdale or Raleigh, right? Or Tuscaloosa or, 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 or Tennessee. And their payment from a monthly standpoint on 500,000 there or 200,000 here looks close to the same because of the taxes associated with it, right? Um, and I'm also saying that people can't be so close-minded, like my brother moved to Carolina and yeah, his taxes for his house, it's absurd how cheap they are. And yet if a Rochesterian saw a water bill for $250 for the month, they'd freak out, right? Yeah. There's different expenses. There's, there's personal property taxes. And I'm not saying it's the same because New York and California, the taxes are absurd. Um, but there's still fees in there. These states still have to run. They're just more yeah. attractive than, than we are right now. But with yeah. that being said, Rochester is becoming more attractive to people from downstate. That will drive our average sales price up. And the lack of inventory is obviously driving our average sales price up. So I don't see anything in the near future that is going to be catastrophic. Um, I do worry that if they don't put some sort of cap on taxes, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think it's a great point. And, you know, I think it's different than the bubble popping, but it's like if, if you know, not to get political in any way, but if, if government or, you know, municipality decide to just uh, tax the market to a crash, then yeah, yeah that, that, that's a, that's an episode for another day, but that, mm -hmm. that could be catastrophic for our area. So yeah, hopefully, uh, Hopefully there is no end in sight in terms of taxes going up here because that would make it like, yeah, why the, like, you know, I think most people, you know, there's, there's certainly been enough of a, of an exodus for people already that, that don't want to pay taxes or deal with whatever. Um, yep. You know, if you give them any more reason to, it could be that much worse. So, and, and, it's, and, you know, again, the affordability thing of like, all right, yeah, you, you just you know, my taxes are never going away. So even if I own my home free and clear and you just doubled up my taxes as an extreme example, why the hell would I stay here? That's going to be the yeah. notion. So. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, you know, it's, that's the danger zone for me, right? Those same buyers that bought their, their first time, their first home five years ago for $125,000. Now all of a sudden, that same home on that same street is 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 bringing in 180 to 200 thousand uh, dollars. Their taxes and and we haven't you know we haven't felt it just yet, but we're about to see people's taxes go up and they're going to be up in arms, right? And I, I'm gonna we're gonna get those phone calls and they're gonna say, hey, you know, can you can you help me to fight my assessment? And you know, it's I don't want to be a jerk about it, and yet like. So wait a second, your assessment went up to 175. Yeah. Would you sell it for 175? Hell no. Then <laughs> mm -hmm. you're probably going to yeah. pay taxes on 175. Yeah. Um, yeah. Meaning that they know it's worth more than that. But that's where I think that there has to be some common ground where they need to, they, they need to cap it or give credits back. They have to figure something out because that seems to be a, a big issue, especially with those same buyers that are on a fixed income. They can't afford to buy up they're stuck in that house and now you're going to tax them out of it. And where do they go? Rent something even worse. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's the point. Like, uh, 
if if we're wrong about the stability of the Rochester market, it's because of taxes as the number one yeah. reason. And and mm -hmm. meaning that they they yeah you know, they just they they raise them beyond sustainable levels. So yeah. But I I like, and I get why some people are moving. Believe me, I I, I really do. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm a weirdo. Like, I love living in Rochester. No, I don't love that. You know, a month ago it was dark out at 4:40 in the afternoon, um, and you know it was three degrees this morning. And yet, I don't know. People seem to love it here. People move here for schools and and everything else. Garbage, Garbage place. And, and where am I going? Right. I think only Rochester would put up with me. And we have Jazz Fest. You, yeah, uh, Jason would like Jason. Jason would thrive in uh, Kentucky. I think he would do really good. <laughs> Bourbon country. Northern, Northern Florida. Northern Florida. Like, you wouldn't make it Southern Florida, but like Jacksonville, you could probably crush it. Um, yeah, anywhere with a Hawaiian t-shirt half buttoned up, I'd be fine. <laughs> And with that visual, oh, uh, you can check out Leave it with that. at TheRetirementTeam.com. Subscribe to the Real Estate Podcast. We're on Facebook um, and uh, YouTube. Check it out. All right, guys. See you guys. Thanks, guys. See you. Thanks for listening to The Real Estate Show. Find us on Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. If you're looking to sell or buy, talk to the Anthony Butera team of Keller Williams Realty, Greater Rochester. Visit anthonybuteraTeam.com.